Welcome to Top Shelf. My name is David Pierce, and this week we're headed out on the water. The America's Cup finals start this week, and what used to be just a boat race for billionaires is now an incredibly high tech, incredibly interesting boat race for billionaires. So we sent Casey Newton out into the San Francisco Bay to see what the America's Cup is becoming and how on earth billionaires spend this much money on a sailboat. weeks away from the America's Cup finals. This year, the boats have been completely redesigned in a way that has made them much, much faster, but also more dangerous. We came down to San Francisco's Pier 80 to meet with the defending champions, Oracle Team USA, to find out what they're doing to win this race and also what they're doing to make sure that it's as safe as possible. So you helped design the 2010 champion that won America's Cup. When it came time to design this year's model, what were the goals? The goal is to, was to make an, to design an exciting boat, something that uh, looks like fast and uh, like amazing machine that people that can see it said, "Wow, that's different, you know, and that's America's Cup. So we try to get something like uh, an high level of um, sailing, so we ended up with a platform which was, I mean, with a rigid wing, which was like similar to what we did in 2010, so it looks like really different, like a wing of an aircraft, and, uh, and we uh, worked a lot on foils, hydrofoils, so now the boat can fly above the water, so for sure we were looking for something really different. And is it, is it the flight that is what makes the boat faster than the wind and gives it the advantage over those other boats? Uh, it depends on the condition. So uh, it depends on the wind condition. If it's windy, if it's light wind with strong wind, if it's like if you go upwind or downwind. So it depends a bit on the condition. But uh, a lot of uh, resistance comes from the hull itself. So because you've got a big volume immersed, so it's, it's, it creates some hydro drag. So it just like prevents you to go faster. So at one stage, if you're able to lift the boat from your hydrofoil, the drag created by the hydrofoil itself uh, is much smaller. So because you've got less resistance, you can just increase your speed. So that's the way it works. Can you talk to me about how you try to design this boat in a way that's safe for the crew? Uh, it's, I mean, the, in, inherently the boat is not that safe because a, a multi-hull can capsize, you know, and you can flip the boat and you can have a pitch pole, uh, a, a, a pitch pole situation. These are dangerous situations. So it's, it's a criteria we always, um, I mean, we, we always uh, choose our design criteria very carefully regarding these maneuvers. So basically we, we can recreate some maneuvers uh, on the computer and see the range of, um, I mean, the, the, the limits, we can see the limits of the operating condition of the boat. So we also give tips to the sailors, say, okay, in this condition, you should have these settings, this setup is probably safer when you, when you start a given, a given maneuver, but still it's inherently, it's not the safe machine. What kind of technology do the sailors carry onto the boat with them to help them monitor conditions in the water? Um, obviously, as uh, every America's Cup team, we have a lot of technology that is involved in the boat. We also have a lot of uh, stuff for the performance. And for example, we are carrying, uh, obviously, a few computers on board, a lot of sensors. We are, just to give you an idea, we are logging 3,000 variables at 10 hertz, 10 times a second. And uh, it's a lot of data. Obviously, while we are sailing, we are not caring about this, all this information, that is more for designers. When we are sailing, we have uh, a lot of information and we are using a portable device. We have a, a PDA head-up display and tablet around. 
and basically every single person on the crew has the just information that he needs. In the past, the cup was different. You have a navigator, it was a person that was sharing the information around and uh, he was basically just doing that. So you actually uh, write some of the software that runs on these PDAs that sailors are, are like yourself are carrying. Can you give us an idea of some of the things that you're measuring that a sailor is checking during the race on his PDA? Sure, for example, I'm a grinder and uh, on my pedestal, we are the ones that are controlling the boards. The boards are the foils that are going up and down. So all the, obviously, when you are on the windward side, you cannot see the leeward board. So all the angle and the loads that we have there, it's very hard to judge by eye. So we have a display that you are carrying that basically tell us the information about the board, about some other numbers. And that is just for us. We are basically the only one on board that care about that information is what we have. The tactician, is, he doesn't really care about the boards. He's more interested in wind situation and the boat speed and through wind angle. So he has his own number and he can just look at that. Let me ask you about safety. These boats are going faster than ever. How do you stay safe when you're out on the boat? That is a tricky question. It's a, it's a new boat and it's like, I don't know, I, I, when I was kids, I was skiing. And uh, you don't think about how dangerous is ski until something happens. You go out, down on the track, you enjoy, and you go faster and faster every day. Here is the same. You like the boat, you go faster every day. Obviously, when something happens, it's bad, but it's what you like and you keep doing. Right. Were you on the boat when it capsized? I had a problem with my ankle the day before, so I was in the hospital checking myself, and I get the bad notice. Okay, okay. so you, do you dodged that bullet. But when you're out there, I mean, do you feel safe, or do you just try not to think about it? I think you forget about it. It's uh, when you go out there, especially now that we are in a pre-race phase, when we go out there, we are not losing much time around the bay. We're just racing. And when you're racing, you have a thousand of things to worry about the, the safety. Right. Yeah. How good are you feeling about your chances uh, next month? We have, we're feeling good, but obviously the team out there are very strong and we have work to do, but we will be there. on this team for 13 years now. It sounds like a lot of your life is just looking at data, trying to maximize the, the uh, performance of these boats. Do you feel like you're starting to hit an upper limit or as you like look out five years, do you think these boats are just gonna keep getting faster and, and better? We've barely scratched the surface with these boats. When the rule was envisaged for these boats in, uh, I guess it was 2011, um, we didn't even envisage these boats would fly above the water. It was imagined they'd sail like conventional multi-hulls with one hull in. Now they're flying, it's increased their performance 10 or 15%. Those sorts of steps are, are not common, but you could imagine that sort of uh, paradigm again, jumping uh, another, whole, another whole environment. So I, I can see big steps in the future. And um, what makes these, this America's Cup and this class so exciting is that we're really just starting out with boats like this in the world of sailing. And, um, we learn something every day, it's fantastic. So even with all of the advances that you're making technologically, it is still the marriage of man and machine that is making this the, the fastest boat that you've sailed yet. The, the marriage of man and machine is what wins the America's Cup, always has been, but the balance of who does what is changing all the time. Interesting, sounds like it's starting to lean more to the machine side. A little bit, yeah, but um, you know, we made the environment that much more complicated that uh, the human beings about the only thing that can deal with all the inputs. But uh, anyway, it's a it's a great challenge. So there you have it. Millions of dollars and tons of energy are being pumped into making these boats incredibly fast as well as safe. But talk to anyone here and they'll tell you, there's no technology that can guarantee the safety of anyone on board. And the reason they're willing to keep taking these risks is because everyone else on the water is gunning for them. The three other teams in this race all want to be the one that knocks off the champion. All Oracle Team USA can do in the meantime is keep training, hope the weather cooperates, and with any luck, they just might defend their championship. Against overwhelming odds, Casey Newton did survive his time on the Oracle boat, and he's here with me now. So Casey, was it 
It was touch and go there for a while, maybe. It was it was a little bit scary, but not as much for us. We were on a chase boat, uh, but we could see what was going on on the Oracle Team USA boat, and it's pretty amazing. Well, and even then, I keep seeing clips of these boats going by, you know, kayakers with cameras, and they're coming like this far. It's it's scary stuff out it, there. It really is. I mean, the boats are enormous, right? This is a 131 foot sail you have. It's yeah. a boat that weighs uh, 13,000 pounds, and it is sailing faster than the wind. It's wow. amazing to. Behold. And the wind is serious. Too, the wind is, is the serious. Yeah, I mean, this was probably the windiest America's Cup ever. It's in the San Francisco Bay. People knew it was going to be windy coming in, but I don't know that they knew exactly how windy. Mm. So, okay, so my big question is, are these boats too dangerous? Like, there's this big back and forth, and everybody seems to have an opinion, but what's, what's yours? Are they too dangerous? So I think people... Um, didn't think about how the wind conditions were going to affect the race as much as they probably should have. They went into this thinking, hey, let's just design the fastest boat imaginable and it will be able to handle the conditions. I think in these conditions, these boats actually are much less safe than people hoped that they would be. Um, overall, America's Cup has a pretty good track record of safety, but at the same time, someone died in the, in the preparations right. for this race, and that was just during practice drills. So the real concern is when the finals start, and these guys are pulling out all the stops, are they going to be able to keep these incredibly huge, fast boats uh, right side up? Right. So the solution, it seems like, might be you know, have it in somewhere other than San Francisco, which is sort of notorious for this, but also having it in San Francisco makes great television. It really does. And the whole idea behind this year's America's Cup was let's take yachting, which is the sport for the super rich, and right. try to make it more accessible. Right. So we'll come in. Slightly. Like this much more accessible. <laughs> this much more accessible. <laughs> but like if you can, if you flew into San Francisco, you could go right up onto the shore right. and and the boats would sort of race by you. Just, you know, you get, you get a decent shot of them with your camera phone. Um, and, and so it would be kind of a much more democratic event mm -hmm. than it ever been before. Um, but as you've noted, the wind conditions have just sort of taken everyone by surprise. I mean, everyone we talked to for this piece just brought up the wind as being uh, a, a real curveball for them. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what's what what happens next? Like, what's happened since you did this? How are they solving these problems? Like, a, the, a guy right. died. They can't yeah. change that fact. Are the, they changing things before the race to make it so that doesn't happen again? They, they have implemented um, a number of uh, recommendations uh, and changes that the teams need to make. Um, racing, or I'm sorry, sailing tends to be a very litigious sport, and mm. so the billionaires who are running all of these teams are suing each other to say, "Well, no, that that change is going to right. uh, disadvantage me, and let's make this change, which will you know have an advantage for me." And so all of that is sort of still being negotiated. Okay. Um, so do the, yeah. can the rules change up to basically the minute of the race, essentially? They really can. Uh, wow. uh, sailing appears to have just the absolute most flexible rules of any sport <laughs> I've ever seen, yeah. and they pretty much seem to change um, like per the dictates of the billionaires who are funding wow. the $100 million campaigns to win the America's Cup. Fair enough. So Fair everyone enough. plays very sort of fast and loose yeah. with the rules. And the other big thing that's happened since we shot this piece is that there's been a cheating scandal. So Oracle has been accused of putting weights on their boats, possibly to sort of keep them wow. more grounded in okay. the water, um, and they've gone over the weight limit for their their class of boat. This is all sort of still being sorted out. Oracle insists we didn't cheat, mm -hmm. but in the meantime, it has been another black eye for uh, a race that many people are starting to view as, as something of a fiasco. Well, so wait, you just described something that it sounds like would make the boat better and safer. And it's cheating to do that, right? Is that, is that what's happening here? That's right. Well, you know, I mean, all of the all of the rules of sailing are like completely arbitrary, mm -hmm. but they do try to come up with a, a weight limit for the boat, right? right? So if you bring some illegal weights on, if you think it's going to give you uh, some sort of performance advantage, like it seems like it's probably not fair not enough. Right. And the idea, the idea is just that it'll handle better. Yeah. They should just make everybody else put the weights in the boat. It's right. Like, I just solved your problem. You're I, welcome. <laughs> America's Cup. Yeah. Like, I mean, it sounds like NASA almost, where you have the, it's, it's 11 people on the boat, right? Yeah. And then and there's this whole control room behind them keeping everything going? Well, so the control room is in a different boat. Okay. So uh, another chase So they're boat. also out on the on the bay with yes. these guys. Okay. Yeah. And they're actually, they're not allowed to communicate during the races. So that's uh, one rule uh, right. is that sort of when you're on the boat, you have to kind of do it by yourself. But they do all have um, PDAs uh, that are uh, like sort of on their arms that have custom written software. Some of the sailors mm -hmm. write their own software, which wow. is pretty amazing. Um, and they nerdy sort of use all that data. It's good very, yeah. very nerdy billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hard to become a billionaire without being it's unless you inherit the well. That's fair. Yeah. So, so what do you think? If you're, you know, looking forward for the America's Cup and the teams building these boats, like what, what do you, what do you see changing? What would you prescribe? You know? well, if you're Larry Ellison, what's, what are you doing next? <laughs> 
If I'm Larry Ellison, I'm going to have a very expensive dinner somewhere mm -hmm. out, uh, and then I'm going to go back to my lab um, and see how we can make these boats faster. But I think that you're going to see the sailing community come under increasing pressure mm -hmm. to truly make these boats safer. Okay, so they wouldn't let you on one? No. Would you get on one if you could? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Would. Yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, uh, you know, I, I keep saying this, but the boats fly. Okay, okay not really. Like, they're still... I mean, but kind yeah, of literally. But they kind yeah. of literally fly, yeah. right? So there's, like, a dagger board, and it's in the water, and, like, you know, the this, like, 7,000 pounds of force lifts them, and then they, they move faster than the wind because they've reduced the drag so much. I want to be on the boat when yeah. that happens. It's maybe just... Not, yeah. Maybe not racing. No. Or maybe racing. I don't know. I don't want to be anywhere near the boat. <laughs> Here's what I say. I, I don't want to be, like, actually, like, at, at the wheel. Like, I, I do not want to be the captain of this ship. But if they could just sort of, like, duct tape me around the mast <laughs> so I could, like, feel that lift, that'd bad. be great. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. Just put me on a nice harness. I'll be good. Okay. Well, so you talked to Julian Guthrie, who yeah. wrote, who literally wrote the book on the America's Cup. She's sort of a historian yeah. and has followed the crew, especially Larry Ellison and the Oracle yeah. crew. And so you talked to her about all this stuff and more. So let's have a look at that. Julian, a lot of the money for the America's Cup has come from Larry Ellison, the founder and CEO of Oracle. Why is Larry Ellison so interested in sailing? He, you know, that's a great question. Sailing for him is where he gets a break from being Larry Ellison, which is a really unexpected thing. So he gets to go out on these boats, he gets to be a member of the team, and he's expected to perform just like anybody else on the boat. And he can have Russell Coots, you know, as his tactician, screaming at him, you know, what the, f did you forget how to sail? You know, and who else is gonna talk to Larry Ellison like that? So I think that he's measured against how well he does on the boat. So having said that, you know, he loves the water, he loves the sea, he's loved sailing since, or the idea of sailing since he was a kid. He was a very accomplished sailor starting in around 1995 through year, year 2000. He got as far as he could along with the sailing in the maxi yachts at that point. And the next level was the America's Cup. And Larry Ellison is all about what, you know, how do you go up to the next weight class? and it had gone from maxi yacht sailing to the America's Cup. The Mayor America's Cup is the pinnacle, so he couldn't go any, you know, that's the heavyweight championship of the world. And it seems like now that he's reached that pinnacle, he's trying to take it to the next level yet again, right? The boats this time around are much faster, maybe more dangerous. Can you talk at all about what's different between this year's race and the 2010 championship? Well, one thing that's different, everybody talks about these boats, the AC-72s, being crazy fast, which they are. I think Team New Zealand logged 52 miles an hour last week, you know, which is faster than the speed limit on the Golden Gate Bridge. And so they are flying. But the boat that really set this all in motion is USA-17, which is in the parking lot here, which you should go and see. And the wing sail of USA-17 was 230 feet tall, too tall when standing up to fit under the Golden Gate Bridge. So that was the trimaran, what Larry Ellison called his black pterodactyl, that won the America's Cup for Oracle Racing in 2010. And that set the precedent for technological innovation. But these boats, are flying, literally. So you have this wing on top of the boat, the hard sail, and you have these wings under the boat that are getting the boat out of the water and therefore doing what sailing you know, tries to do when it's at its best, and that is reduce drag. So you're having these crazy fast boats. I mean, they're really phenomenal to look at. The instability is coming from the speed, from the foiling, and from San Francisco Bay because of how extreme sailing is on San Francisco Bay. So without resorting to hyperbole, uh, is this possibly gonna be the most dangerous America's Cup of all time? Oh, definitely. But, but I think it's important to keep perspective. This is a 162 year old regatta and there have been two fatalities. You know, San Francisco being a pedestrian is more dangerous. You know, 18 fatalities every year crossing the street in San Francisco. So you have to have some perspective. You know, you'll talk with Jimmy Smith, you talk with some of these sailors, they're adrenaline junkie, junkies, and they want it to be safe, but they want to get to the finish line the fastest. I mean, that's the objective. NBC has a deal to show this year's NBC, or this year's America's right. Cup. Um, how has television getting involved changed the race? Is there sort of a, a desire among television executives to have a race that sure is fast, but is maybe going to have a little bit more calamity than the uh, average regatta? Well, you know, NBC, it's my understanding, didn't become really interested in the America's Cup until Russell Coots pitch-polled the um, AC-45 
back, it was more than a year ago, it was about a year and a half ago. So suddenly, you know, you have these gorgeous boats, you have this amazing amphitheater of the San Francisco Bay, and you have these boats pitch bowling, which is like doing a cartwheel if you're a boat. And suddenly they thought, wow, the executives, the, the media folks thought, this is really exciting. This is, you know, Formula One racing on the water. So it was this, Yes, it's getting faster, it's getting more dangerous, and that attracted the major networks. I understand now for the first time they have PDAs, they have wearables. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier that technology has always been a big part of yeah. the America's Cup. What role is it playing in this year's race? Oh, every facet of it. I mean, it's really, you know, it's, it's the, the technological innovation in the uh, grade of carbon fiber. You know, it's what is the best carbon fiber you can get for the boats, the, the Kevlar, the Kleisar, the aeronautical um, skin that goes around the sails. It's, um, it is how these races are going to be umpired, which is totally changing because of the technology. It is um, how viewers, people who know nothing about sailing, are going to be able to understand the races because of the lines they're laying out through this, um, through this totally new technology that they're laying out on the water. So they're going to understand which boat is ahead and they're going to understand what the boundaries are, what the objectives are. Um, so that is entirely new. You know, the guys are mic'd, the guys are, there's, there are hundreds of sensors on board these boats. Um, the, the, the weather data that they're getting, the, uh, the ability to track the other boat's performance and compare it to their own. You know, it's all technology based. It's it's definitely cutting edge. I think it's the most cutting edge uh, technology used in any sport. The like, what people liken it to is Formula One racing. Does that does that analogy hold up in your mind? Is this Formula One racing on the water? I think it's a lot more complex. You know, I think for one, building these boats is more complex. You think about they. It's more complex than building a you know an airplane even because they're having to build these you know space age flying machines for the water and for the air. You know, you've got the engine of the boat, which is the sail, in the air, and you've got the other parts. So the engineering of these boats is super complex. More complex than cars, more complex than, than airplanes. You know, the wing sail that they built for USA 17, the winning boat in 2010, 230 feet tall, too tall when, too tall when standing up to fit under the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, it was the largest wing sail ever built, wing ever built for air or for sea. So as you size up the competition this year, uh, can anybody catch Oracle? How, how competitive is it? I think it's very competitive. You know, people have talked about how um, there are fewer teams this year and complained or lamented over there being fewer teams. Um, but one thing that I heard Jimmy Spithill say, which made a lot of sense, is, yeah, in the past there have been more teams, but they weren't all real contenders. I think the Kiwis are the, the team to beat. You know, I wouldn't... Um, Although I think that, you know, team, uh, Oracle Team USA is unbelievable, you know, and, and Jimmy and Ben Ainsley and their whole crew. It's a pretty cool thing, you know, it's a dream realized whether you like, you know, whether you're a fan of the America's Cup or not, there are a lot of dreams being realized with this event. That's our show. Thanks to Casey Newton for being here, and thanks to Julian Guthrie and the whole Oracle Team USA team as well. The America's Cup final starts September 7th on NBC, and it's going to be awesome, but probably also kind of terrifying. Anyway, we'll be back next week, and we'll see you then.